Uh, thanks for joining us, everyone. Uh, this is new, so uh, hopefully you guys can have patience um, with us as we do this. Uh, just a couple quick announcements. We just want to say congratulations to Nathan and Sarah Sproxton. Uh, they got married yesterday, uh, so that's pretty exciting. Um, what else? Uh, we apologize. Uh, unfortunately, we had to cancel our outdoor service. Uh, our venue canceled on us. Uh, it wasn't anything we could control. It was removed from us. Um, just a reminder, we are starting a Tuesday night connect group here at the church uh, starting October 6th. Uh, so looking forward to that. If you haven't signed up, if you register, uh, that allows a uh, us to get a seating plan figured out uh, so we know exactly how to seat everyone. And uh, we're probably going to be doing uh, this format for October. Um, just uh, we need to change. Uh, we can keep doing what we were doing. Uh, it wasn't quite sustainable at this point. So we just need to take a, a little break and do this. Uh, um, and yeah, so let's just start uh, with a word of prayer. And then I'd like we're going to sing a song and I just need to figure out how to do that. Father, we just thank you for this day, this opportunity to gather. Um, and again, we just pray for your blessing upon our time together. To Christ's name, amen. <laughs> Conquer the grave. 
forgot to mute, <laughs> unmute. Thanks, Nicole. Uh, at this time, we're gonna get Scott Marcus to give us an update uh, from the elders. Well, good morning, church family. So as we mentioned back in July, the board would meet throughout the summer months to uh, further discuss a church reopening plan for worship services in the fall. The board had decided in July that we were not yet ready to reopen the church for worship services, but that we would work towards a plan for doing so. Since then, we have returned church staff to the church on a regular basis, and smaller groups such as youth and Bible studies have started using the church building. We thank you for your patience, and we thank you for your prayers in this matter. We know many of you have been praying for us as a leadership board. We understand that some of you are really eager and ready to meet and worship face to face, but we also understand that some of you still feel more comfortable viewing the online service as a family or as a small group. We are currently planning to reopen the church for in-person worship services on Sunday, November 1st. We are also planning to transition from a pre-recorded service to a live stream service. In order for us to offer live stream services, we have to improve our live streaming by upgrading our hardware, software, and internet, and this takes time. We also need volunteers. We need help with participation in the services, help in the form of tech teams, as well as help with the music. If you are willing to help out to make this November 1st date a success, please let us know as soon as possible. The details on how to participate in the in-person service will be sent out as we get closer to that November 1st date. Another matter we are addressing right now is the annual general meeting. As you know, due to the emergency order in place, we postponed this annual general meeting from its original planned date in June. The latest information released from the Ontario government requires us now to have our meeting prior to December 31st. We fully anticipate that this meeting will be a hybrid meeting, both in person and virtual. Our constitution allows us to establish quorum in person and by electronic means. However, voting must be done in person or by proxy for those who attend virtually or who cannot attend at all. We would ask that when this date is set for the annual general meeting, that you make every effort to attend either in person or virtually. We value your input as members and we want to successfully take care of church business as well as retain our incorporation and charitable status. Again, we thank you for your patience and for all your prayers in this matter. We know God is still at work through this challenging time and we will continue to trust that he will guide us through this. If you have any questions, concerns, or comments, please feel free to contact any one of the Maple Hill Baptist Church board members. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Scott. Uh, this time we're going to have Robert uh, lead us in prayer and in uh, a scripture reading. Good morning, church family. Greetings from the Dunlops and Mount Albert. Margaret and I are doing quite well, and I want to take this opportunity to thank you again for your ongoing prayer support as I recover strength in my legs. I really can't thank you enough. There just aren't words for that. For the scripture this morning, I've um, selected a few verses from Psalm 5 that I think speak to the times very well. It's Psalm 5, 11 and 12. But let all who take refuge in you be glad. Let them ever sing for joy. Spread your protection over them, and those who love your name may rejoice in you. That those who love your name may rejoice in you. For surely, O Lord, you bless the righteous. You surround them with your favor as with a shield. Given the times we're in now with the second wave of COVID upon us, and no doubt disappointment is heavy on our souls, let's pray, let's make it a priority church family to pray, to continue to pray for one another in coming days and coming weeks, that God's people would be encouraged in the midst of this, in the hope and the promise and the joy, the joy that is ours in Christ. And I think this 
pair of verses illustrate that very well. Let's unite our hearts in prayer. Father, we thank you for this beautiful day. We thank you for your grace to us, that you are merciful and mighty, that you are, as the psalmist wrote in Psalm 8, mindful of your people in a tremendous way. It leaves us speechless, Lord, that you would pour yourself out as a sacrifice for us in unbounded love. And Father, we're together as your body today to celebrate that unbounded love. And we thank you. Lord, we pray for the leadership of our land. We pray for wisdom, for your hand upon them. Father, as we go through these difficult times, we pray for health workers as they help those who are ailing and ill. And Father, for safety for them. We pray for the lonely and the discouraged, Father, that indeed they would find the joy that you have for them in your word, that they would seize hold of that promise and that that would be very prevalent in their lives as you carry them through these difficult days. Father, we remember some of our own to you, our own church family. We think of Diane Carlson this morning and her family dealing with her father's health as he is uh, ailing. Father, for your grace to Diane as she looks after her father, tends to him. Lord, for strength for each day. Lord, that you'd make your presence with her very apparent. And Lord, that she'd take great comfort in that... Uh, you care for her, and Lord, that you're very, very close to her at this time. And Father, we remember Tracy Pigeon to you this morning as she recovers from another stroke. And Lord, for your grace to her, Father, that uh, through all of this, she would, she like Diane, would see your presence with her and would rejoice in God, her Savior King. Lord, at this time, we'd, we'd like to come before you and confess our sins, lay them before you, Lord, and we rejoice that you are faithful and just when we come to you and pour our sins out before you, faithful and just in forgiving and restoring us. Father, thank you. Lord, we pray your name would be exalted and lifted up in our lives. We pray for enabling grace. We pray that you'll bless us as we look into Ecclesiastes this morning, that you'll be with Mike and Father, that you'll speak to all of us from your word and that we would have eyes to see and ears to hear and that our hearts would be open to you and that you would bless us. May your name be praised, O Lord, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thanks very much, uh, Rob. Appreciate that. Um, just a note, I've been getting a couple texts um, to uh, remind people to sign up for the newsletter. Uh, if um, they get in touch with you or um, anyone asks what's going on um, in the newsletter, we'll provide all the links and all the latest updates. Um, let's continue uh, with the song of praise. Thank you. 
again uh, thank you uh, at this time uh, we're just gonna start in prayer and um, we're gonna go to the word uh, father we just thank you for this time again thank you for your word uh, just as we look at it today we just pray uh, for you to guide us to instruct us from it and again we just thank you for all that you give and who you are through Christ's name amen um, It's just uh, kind of weird because right now all I see is me and so I guess I'm preaching to myself so we'll see how this goes even though I know you're all listening. Uh, if you want to open up your Bibles to uh, the book of Ecclesiastes um, to chapter 11 today um, we're going to continue on. This is the second last uh, sermon in the series. Um, and yeah, just doing it this way. I don't quite know how it's going to go, but I trust the Lord to speak uh, through his word to each of you today. Um, so Ecclesiastes uh, chapter 11, starting in verse 7. Ecclesiastes 11, starting verse 7, uh, going through to verse 12. Eight. Light is sweet, and it is pleasant for the eyes to see the sun. So if a person lives many years, let him rejoice in them all. But let him remember that the days of darkness will be many. All that comes is vanity. Rejoice, O young men, in your youth, and let your hearts cheer you in the days of your youth. Walk in the ways of your heart and the sight of your eyes, but know that for all these things, God will bring you into judgment Remove vexation from your heart, put away pain from your body, for your youth and the dawn of life are vanity. Chapter 12, verse 1, remember also your creator in the days of your youth, before the evil day comes and the years draw near of which you will say, I have no pleasure in them. Before the sun and the light and the moon and the stars are darkened and the clouds return after the rain, in the day when the keepers of the house tremble. 
and the strong men are bent, and the grinders cease because they are few, and those who look through the windows are dimmed, and the doors on the street are shut, when the sound of the grinding is low, and one rises up at the sound of the bird, and all the daughters of the song are brought low. They are afraid also of what is high, and terrors are in the way. The almond tree blossoms, the grasshopper drags itself along the de along and desire fails because man is going to his eternal home and the mourners go about the streets before the silver cord is snapped or the golden bowl is broken or picture or the picture is shattered at the fountain or the wheel broken at the cistern and the dust returns to the earth as it was and the spirit returns to god who gave it vanity of vanities says the preacher all is vanity what's your uh favorite childhood uh, memory maybe as a teen or maybe you are a teen what's your favorite memory as a child just what's what's your favorite memory in general uh, what is it that makes it special as well I should give you a moment to think about that but what is your your favorite childhood memory and then to continue because I'm not going to give you much time what are you enjoying even now in life and why uh, I have many childhood memories. Uh, not all of them are uh, that special. Uh, many memories locked in a dark box in a room in my brain. Uh, but I do have one highlight from my youth. I've probably shared it before, but it's my highlight, so I don't mind talking about it. I remember when I was about 17 years old, I had a friend who lived on a street over, um, and they had this massive hill, and at the bottom was a pond. And we, just this one day, they had like a party. Um, this was adults, kids, everything. And we'd go to the top of this hill, line up all our bikes, and then just pedal down, get as much speed as we could down into this pond. Um, call me crazy, whatever you like. It didn't matter. You didn't just go and hit a jump and go into the pond. Your front wheel would hit the mud. And all of a sudden, you just tumble head over heels. You'd have blood everywhere. I'm surprised nobody got seriously hurt, uh, but it was fun. And then there was a fire and there was eating and um, refreshments. Uh, and it was just special. There was this sense of community. There was this laughter. And, and that's a huge joy to me that, that I remember. Uh, it had nothing to do uh, with drugs. There was no alcohol. Oh, well, there was lots of alcohol, but it had nothing to do with that. That's not what made it special. But it was the laughter, the community, and, and the food. And this was outside of church. It had nothing to do with church. But as I think about that, as I think about having joy, this is also a reflection of what church uh, should be, a body of believers living uh, in full appreciation of what they have, what they've been given, and um, the abundance we have. And there are moments like this the church should have but doesn't always necessarily have. Um, every moment we gather, or even if it's virtually, uh, we should be using this time as a sense of joy of refreshment, not to grumble or to complain, um, but to laugh and to pray together as we've been doing. Uh, but in here, God, again, brings us to a place uh, where we are reminded to enjoy what this life in the flesh is offering because it is brief and fleeting. We aren't to waste our, our lives on sinful li living, but joyfully living with purpose and enjoying the things that God has given us in this life uh, that aren't meant to burden. Uh, become, well, they can become burdens. They can become huge idols in our life as we want more and more. They just seem to take over our life and draw us away from God. Uh, which is a real danger we have to be careful of. But at the same time, we want to rejoice and be happy um, because it gives us a, a sense of what is to come, where there will be no more tears or sorrows. And so really the point of today's uh, little sermon is uh, quite simple. Is the creator of your life uh, central to your life? Um, so it just really starts, right? The brevity of life, uh, Hevel, breath, uh, life goes quickly. Um, today, uh, Bethany I, and I shall be happy with us, celebrate our 17 years of marriage. Uh, and just looking back, 17 years, it's like, like that time just flew by. Um, it's just, it's amazing. It's a breath, it's Hevel, vanity. Um, 
but it's been good at times. Uh, he says in Ecclesiastes 11, 7 through 8, light is sweet and it is pleasant for the eyes to see the sun. So if a person lives many years, let him rejoice in them all. But let him remember that the days of darkness will be many. All that comes is vanity. Uh, light often delegates the pleasures of life. Uh, darkness is usually related to sin, but light are the good things in life. Um, and to see the sun here, it merely, it's to live joyfully to, I mean, in the winter time, when you get all those cloudy days, cloudy days, and all of a sudden the sun comes out, it just refreshes the spirit. And uh, that's what we're to have, or to keep our eyes upwards. Um, uh, the, this one guy says it's a, this twofold description implies that life is not only good in itself, but it, that it is to be savored with enthusiasm as one might enjoy honey. I'm not sure honey is something everyone enjoys. Maybe chocolate is a better thing. Um, but really in life, we're left with a choice. Uh, we can enjoy it, uh, struggle through it, and still try to enjoy what God has given us. Or we can mope and grumble uh, that time and chance didn't give us quite what we wanted, that God, through his providence and sovereignty, didn't give us uh, what we desired. You know, I would have loved to be a professional athlete or, or some, some other things that just, those are things I desire and want, but I don't have them. And I've had to learn to walk in light and to find joy in the things that I do have. Um, I never expected to be a pastor. I've always said that. Um, and it's still like, ha, ha, this is a huge responsibility. Um, so there's, life is brief. If it, life is so short, why waste time wanting what you haven't been handed? Uh, a lot of people aren't content, aren't happy with life. Because again, they to accept what God has given them, that time and chance, uh, as Ecclesiastes has put it. But we need to find enjoyment and pleasure in what you can with the talents and gifts that God has given you. Um, this was a real struggle for me um, till I was probably around the age of 21, uh, coming to terms with many dark days and just learning to enjoy uh, what God has given me. Um, I think we probably all go through those dark days and still at times where we're in them maybe even now and just have to fight and push it away and, and to find that joy in some of the things that, that are good in our lives to enjoy uh, the good things of this world. Um, so he does talk about this. How do you do that? Well, it comes to this idea of living fully also uh, with how brief things are uh, with with brevity in mind, uh, we can come, we can, and are able to live with joy. Uh, and again, if we so choose, uh, this is the battles we face in our, our minds at time. The struggles are real. Uh, but he does say this, rejoice in verse nine, rejoice, O young man, in your youth, and let your heart cheer you in the day of your youth. Walk in the ways of your heart and the sight of your eyes, but know that for all these things, God will bring you into judgment. Remove vexation from your heart and put away pain from your body for youth and the dawn of life are vanity. Um, so he, he puts this challenge, you know, rejoice, be glad, enjoy your youth. Uh, many people are like, but I'm not a youth anymore. Well, you're alive. You have breath. We can still enjoy what they have. Um, but this does come for a question for a lot of parents, right? How, how much do you let your children enjoy? Um, you could let your children enjoy their youth, um, but not in a way that is that will be harmful for them. Uh, one that doesn't make them older before their times. As a child, I was exposed to a lot of things that robbed me of my childhood uh, that still have effects in my brain today because my parents didn't shepherd me. There are dangers to just giving your children to dangers to your children, uh, giving them freedom, that freedom to explore uh, where we think our children a lot are a lot more mature than they actually are. They are not wise. I'm sorry, but children are still children. They're still maturing. We're, they're actually lambs. That's how I like to look at it. Who need a shepherd to watch over them? And that's why children have been entrusted 
Uh, if you have children, they're entrusted to you as a shepherd. You're to guide them, to protect them uh, from dangers because uh, wolves are real. Uh, lions are out there. Uh, the evil one would love to have your children in his fold. Um, social media, games, movies, and music all shape our children in ways we are typically ignorant of. Uh, I've been a youth pastor or I was a youth pastor for over 14 years and it was a very visible thing to witness in their lives and it was very easy to recognize parents who did not invest shepherd or even care what their children watched and then you kind of wonder why these kids uh, aren't in church uh, don't come to uh, follow the Lord Jesus at all and so I just kind of wonder, this is a question for each one of us, uh, what's your ratio of spiritual shaping to the entertainment programming that we receive? What's your ratio of spiritual shaping to the entertainment programming? You know, if you think about all that you watch, listen to, uh, how much of that compared to spiritual life uh, for your children, for yourself, 10 to one, six to one, like, what is your ratio? I think that's something important to think about, especially for parents. Uh, parents too easily let their children play with the wolves and then wonder why they are devoured, why they walk away from an idea of faith that they never embraced. Uh, it's hard. This is the biggest challenge for anyone in youth ministry or any parent is uh, shaping your children to embrace and come to terms to know Jesus in a personal, real way for themselves, um, not to just do it because you as parents do it, you grandparents do it. Uh, it's, it's more than that. This is a relationship that each individual needs to have with a one-on-one -on -one with their Lord. Um, and if you don't, uh, we have to come to terms with the idea that if we're not investing, if we're not shepherding, we're allowing the evil one to adopt our children into his family. And then people wonder now and, and really struggle with this idea, like why do teens struggle with self-esteem, anxiety, depression, and a host of other problems when really they haven't rejoiced in their youth, they haven't kept their eyes on the Lord um, in their youth. And then it's a real, uh, it is tough to later on come back to Jesus. Um, it's interesting, uh, you can go around and talk to many people who don't go to church and be like, oh, I need to get my child to church. I need to get my child to church. And you're like, no, uh, you actually need to go to church. Uh, so he says this, walk in the ways of your heart and the sight of your eyes. So I just continue. If you're for God, following your heart is going to guide you down a different path, a path of righteousness. The heart is key here. Uh, we've heard about the heart a lot this past year. Uh, and uh, the, the idea here that, uh, if you're walking with the Lord, um, you will be able to rejoice in, in more sincerity and truth, I think. And he does continue, um, sorry, one that follows light and not darkness. So if you're for God, following your heart is going to guide you down a different path of righteousness. One that follows light and not darkness. At times you will be tempted, uh, but with God, uh, God always provides a way out, uh, 1 Corinthians 10.13. Now, a lot of times that passage from 10.13 has, has people thinking, oh, well, any hardship I face, uh, God always provides a way out. It's actually talking about temptation, uh, our temptations to sin. God uh, does provide a way out, uh, but we're not always looking for that. We don't always want that because uh, we realize that hardships do come into our lives. Um, and this is the key part, this next part in the passage, but know that for all these things, God will bring you into judgment. Uh, this is a key part of all godly living, keeping in your head and your mind that God will judge all those things, everything, our thoughts, what we do, what we say. And he's kind of trying to bring it back, have enjoy rejoice you know laugh uh, enjoy the things that god has like i i grew up it's like i didn't grow up when i first started church i i went to a fairly conservative church where 
it's like I got in trouble for playing cards uh, that you can't dance that you can't drink but God gives us those things to use and to enjoy with temperance and self-control that's what I needed to learn growing up temperance self-control to enjoy the things but not allow them to control me uh, and that's the huge challenge um, but it's key to remember that God will bring everything into judgment. It's that fear, and we're going to look at that later on, but it's, it's that should be our reminder. Oh, how does God see this? What does God think about this that I'm listening to? Or what am I doing? Um, so this is key part of all godly living, remembering that God uh, will bring everything into judgment. Uh, I mean, when we did the Apostles' Creed, all throughout uh, the book of Ecclesiastes, we're reminded that God is sovereign and in control, and we will be held accountable for what we do. Um, there are roadblocks, though, in this passage uh, to rejoicing, uh, and they're mental and physical. He says, remove vexation from your heart and put pain away from your body, for youth and the dawn of life are vanity. This uh, vexation... Uh, the Hebrew word kahaz refers to that which angers, grieves, or irritates. I mean, just being at work, um, not just for me, anywhere really, it it's, comes down to learning to push the drama and aside, you know, like water down the duck's back, uh, whatever it is. It's just not to let it bother you. Learning to not get absorbed, not to suck that all in, and just to push it away to not embrace it, to not get involved. And yeah, it does take effort. It seems like humans just love to uh, love the negative stuff in life. I don't wanna hear the good stuff, I wanna hear the bad stuff. Um, but that's not always true. Sometimes with drama, you just get drawn in and it wears you down. Um, and it just, it causes so much vexation to the heart. Um, and that's just internally in your thinking. How many times have you stayed up late at night just chewing on things, uh, upset over something someone said, or um, just feeling offended at what people do? Um, and really, you have to remove that from your heart. Just surrender it to God. I, I know it sounds very easy. Um, but again, I think uh, God gives us uh, the ability to think think. think through things uh, and their, the ability is there to uh, train our minds to do that. And then he talks about pain uh, from your body um, and put away pain from your body. Um, that's the physical aspects, uh, whether it's material, the desires for material, those things cause pain when you can't have and you want, um, the tortures people put themselves through just to stay uh, super fit at times. Um, again, it can become an idol, um, but also the abuse of substances um, can take their toll on the body. And he's like, get rid of those things. Know what they are. What is affecting you physically? And again, he brings it. Youth and dawn of life or vanity or hevel. It's brief. If life is so brief, we really want to be careful on how we treat uh, our brains and our bodies. And um, he says this uh, in chapter 12, uh, remember your creator. Uh, remember also your creator uh, in the days of your youth, before the evil days come and the years draw near of which you will say, I have no pleasure in them. Before the sun and the light and the moon and the stars are darkened and the clouds return after the rain. In the day when the keepers of the house tremble and the strong men are bent and the grinders cease because they are few. And those who look through the windows are dimmed and the doors on the street are shut when the sound of the grinding is low. And, the, and one rises up at the sound of a bird and all the daughters of the song are brought low. They are afraid also of what is high and terrors are in the way. The almond tree blossoms, the grasshopper drags itself along and desire fails because man is going to his eternal home 
and the mourners go about the streets before the silver cord is snapped or the golden bowl is broken or the pitcher is shattered at the fountain or the wheel broken at the cistern and the dust returns to the earth as it was and the spirit returns to God who gave it. Vanity of vanities, says the preacher, all is vanity. Um, I mean, the first line, remember also your creator in the days of your youth. And then the rest is just talking about the decay um, or how life uh, just begins to crumble away. Um, remember, remember also your creator in the days of your youth um, before it's too late. Um, to remember means to bring back to remembrance, to maybe think back to uh, the great things God has done. Have you thought about uh, the day uh, God called you into his uh, fold? when he made you a child of himself, when Jesus became real to you? Do you remember those times? Do you reflect on them? Uh, do you remember, uh, do you bring to mind opportunities God has brought or blessings he has given to you or, or prayer uh, that you prayed and him answering uh, those prayers? Don't forget everything God has done or is going to do. It's not just the youth that need to remember this. Uh, as we get older, uh, it's easy to forget. Uh, it's just kind of part of um, that whole process. I think it's a, a great challenge to everyone, young or old, is, and really it goes back to that point, is God the creator, uh, pardon me, is the creator of your life, <laughs> central to your life is the creator of your life central to your life i mean if you answer that really fast like yep is he if you i think that's something um good to really reflect on is the creator of your life central to your life because it's easy for him for for god for our savior to get kind of pushed to the side a guy named Bartholomew, he says this, it, it refers to allowing the notion of God as creator to shape one's view of life and one, one's handling of life's enigmas now. This idea of remembering is going to shape your views on life. It's going to help you get through what you're going through now, the struggles. Um, here also we have a warning. Another guy puts it like this. Here we have a warning against mindless self-indulgence and um, during the days of one's vigor. To forget the creator of youth is to invite bitter regrets and an empty existence in old age. To remember the creator is to follow the path of wisdom and extend the joy of life. Uh, and yeah, uh, we're not gonna go, go through the next eight verses there. Um, they're all metaphors, very beautifully written. Uh, if you want some information on those, I can send that to you, just email me. But the metaphors that follow in verses one, B and eight, all describe the deterioration of the body as we age or have aged. Um, this writer, he brings it right to the front. When we get weak, our eyes begin to dim and it's like clouds come after sunny days. Like it's, it's very real. Uh, the deterioration of this body. Um, as you get older, you realize, well, myself anyways, you're like, just a little bit slower to get up, feeling the creaks and groans. And I know people will be like, well, you're not that old, but um, you still feel the deterioration of the flesh. And that's why we remember our creator. Uh, we rejoice and enjoy and embrace what we have now because we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Uh, what I thought we could end on this morning um, or look at, I'm just going to screen share it, is uh, if you want to see that, is um, just this idea to remember, um, because I think it has to do with the fear of the Lord. And why remember? Um, because it is the fear of the Lord that will hold you steady. It's that fear of him in a respectful uh, loving way and also in a way that's like, you know, the, my parents are watching 
the other day we're driving through Queensville and they just park a, a car, no one's in it, but automatically you see everyone hitting their brakes um, to make sure that they're not speeding. Um, but I just wanna read through each of these because uh, I think it hits at home very nicely why we remember. Uh, Psalm 111, 10 says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. Proverbs 1, 7, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. Proverbs 8, 13, the fear of the Lord is hatred of evil, pride and arrogance in the way of evil and the perverted speech I hate. Proverbs 9, 10, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the Holy One is insight. Proverbs 10, 27, the fear of the Lord prolongs life, but the years of the wicked will be short. In the fear of the Lord, one has strong confidence and his children will have a refuge. Proverbs 14, 27, the fear of the Lord is a fountain of life that one may turn away from the snares of death. Better is a little with the fear of the Lord than great treasure and trouble with it. The fear of the Lord is instruction and wisdom and humility comes before honor. Proverbs 16, 6, by steadfast love and faithfulness, iniquity is atoned for. And by the fear of the Lord, one turns away from evil. Proverbs 19, 20, the fear of the Lord leads to life and whoever has it rests satisfied. Isaiah, and the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. Uh, I didn't want to do all these, but I will anyways. He will be the stability of your times, abundance of salvation, wisdom, knowledge, the fear of the Lord is Zion's treasure. Um, in Acts 9.31, so the church throughout all Judea, Galilee and Samaria had peace and was being built up. And walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit, they multiplied. And 2 Corinthians 5.11, Therefore, knowing the fear of the Lord, we persuade others. Uh, but what we are is known of God, and I hope it is also known, or I hope it's known also to your conscience. I like how he ends that one there. I hope it's known to your conscience. I hope you know that the fear of the Lord is important. Um, as we talk and we want to see the church grow, uh, the church is only going to grow if we in the church have a genuine understanding and fear of the Lord. Um, so these are important. Why remember? Because it's the fear of the Lord that will hold you steady. And is the creator central to your life. Uh, Father, we just thank you uh, for your word again. We just thank you. Uh, for who you are and how you work. Just thank you for this book that just lays it all bare for us, uh, Lord. And I just pray for, my, for our church uh, that we would remember you, that you would be with the parents. Give them the courage, the boldness, uh, the strength, uh, the determination um, as they fight uh, for the lives of their children uh, as the they work uh, to keep them really uh, in the fear of you uh, as they teach them the fear of the Lord and, and who you are, Jesus. I pray that they themselves will be a reflection of what they teach. And so, Lord, we just thank you for your word. Uh, we thank you for how you work. And again, just allow your Holy Spirit to work in our lives. To Christ's name, amen. I just want to... Uh, have another song from Nicole.
Thank you. Uh, just praise the Lord. Um, we are all done. Thank you for joining us. If you want, um, if you want to stay, I can allow you to talk. If you want to say hi, I can add you to the Zoom call. So anyone who stays on, I can do that or just leave. Um, but I'll just zip through that right now. Uh, love to hear. Um, be great for everyone to have this opportunity to talk. All right. So the Lord bless each and every one of you.